Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us once again at Totus Tutus Evangelization Network. I'm Dr. Jonna Talone Sullivan. I am your host today. We are continuing now with series two of uh, Ted Flynn's um, podcast that we're doing. We just did series one, and it's all about his new book, and uh, which just came out today. And you can get this book at sign.org because it just came out today. Hi, Ted. Once again, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. Now, um, let's start again with a Hail Mary. And uh, we are going to continue on. Uh, I'm going to have Ted raise his book here in a minute. I'd like to do our prayer first. And then we're just going to continue on right with the miracle. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and let all those who hate thee flee from before your face. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we do this podcast. All right, Ted, please hold up your brand new book that you have laboriously worked on. It is called Garen Bindal, The Warning and the Great Miracle, The Divine Reset That Will Correct the Conscience of the World. And you can get that right now. It just came out hot press today on sign.org. Okay. We are now going to continue. I'm going to switch from gallery view to speaker because you'll want to pay attention to Ted uh, on um, the miracle. We're, we're talking about, we ended with the warning in phase um, and series one. Now we're starting with the miracle. Um, what is the miracle, Garen Bindal? What, what does it coincide with as an event in the church? Oh, you want me to just begin to what the, the data points are in the miracle? Um, well, whatever's best. How do you feel best on, uh, you want to uh, do a little overview first? Uh, uh, it? No, no. Uh, since we don't know what it is, the points are the miracle because to do an overview, frankly, is, is are the points because there's much more information specifically on the miracle of of when in some circumstances surrounding it than the warning because we only yep. know so we we could go over those but it's important to know right from the start that Fatima was was pretty much only about one country that would spread her errors throughout the world and that was Russia and again here it is you know from 1917 all of the way to 1961 again Russia was the focal point of what the Blessed Mother was addressing. So we have a country with 11 time zones, literally from uh, Vladivostok in the east all the way to St. Petersburg. Now, from where we are on the east coast, we're both on the east coast, uh, that literally is from the east coast of the United States all the way to Perth, Australia. So across 3,000 miles of the United States, across the very large Pacific Ocean, and then from Sydney all the way to Perth. So the fact is there's this Soviet empire of now the republics, which has a very, very storied history with communism. And we know that when these events happen, communism has a very, very big role to play. So the Blessed Mother didn't say it was about China. She didn't say it was about Islam. She didn't say it was about the Persian Gulf. She didn't specifically say it was about Ukraine there that we know of, unless it was in the third secret or something, which has been said. And so Russia is central to this. And so what the Blessed Mother said, that the miracle will not only be for the conversion of Russia, but for the conversion of the whole world, thus, the key phrase here, thus all will love our hearts. So this is what the miracle will do for mankind, where all will love our hearts, the sacred and the immaculate heart. So on some data points that we do know without interpolation or extrapolating from anybody else, of which there are many other people saying they have been given information on that. That may very well be true, 
but it's not something that I dealt with in this book to just deal with Garabandal standing on its own two legs of what was said. Before you do your um, uh, start with the data points, can I just ask one question? Some people may not know uh, that they're viewing this maybe the first time. What When does the miracle take place after the warning? The miracle takes place after the warning with the operative word is within one year. Within one year. Within one year. So, you know, from you want to go legally within, but it can't be, you know, one to nine. It's it's within 365 days. Thank you. OK, go ahead. Sorry. So the first is that it's going to coincide with an event in the church. On October 1st, 1961, Our Lady of Mount Carmel of, at Garabandal, incidentally, when she came at, at, at Garabandal, it's the first time in history she came with the name of a biblical site, Mount Carmel. She told something very important to Conchita. It had to do with a future, quote, major church event where there would be the reunification of Christians. Major, major. And a lot of these points, frankly, are major, and you can dwell on each one for quite a while, which we won't do, but we'll just hit it. So we know there's a reunification of Christians after this event. And the Blessed Mother also said these events, th this miracle, and, and these are not to be fully comprehended with the human mind. And that's what I experienced when I was in the early phases of this book, just doing the data dump of, of putting an enormous amount of information in the book and then trying to make it a story through cohesion and basically having some resemblance to sanity. You, you, um, which is this, this material is so ethereal and out there. It, unless a person is predisposed to it. it, it's very hard to understand. That's why she said it's very hard for the human mind to comprehend what's coming. It's so big. And that's what I experienced. Okay. Now, wow. when she said the reunification of, of the Christians, that means there had to have been a split at some point. Now, the, the, the Christian church never split with Islam of where in the seventh century Islam started to grow under Muhammad. So there was never a unification of the faiths there. So we know it's not that. But what I found fascinating when I researched this, and I, I almost fell off the chair when I saw this, the, the official date of the declaration of the split of the Western right with the Eastern right or the Latin right versus the Eastern right, we all know is 1054. But the date that that was actually signed was July 16th, the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So there's a lot of these little these little things that you can glue together where you can see possibly heaven is putting together a tremendous mosaic. It's kind of like when you understand the Bible, the more you understand the old, the more you understand the new. And, and if you were to just read the New Testament, you wouldn't have the appreciation in, uh, for when they talk about Joshua, Moses, Caleb, you know, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and, the, and all the way to the minor prophets, you wouldn't, uh, Joel, you wouldn't have appreciation for that. Or especially in Hebrews 11, which I call the Hebrew Hall of Fame you know, where all of these great patriarchs are mentioned. So that's what this apparition is also about. And then the other split could be with the Protestant church with the 95 thesis on the door at Wittenberg, Germany. So there was a split then. So is there is that a reunification of the churches? I think it is because mm -hmm. it's going to be so fantastic we, we, we can't grab it, but this grace of coming to the warning, I think these, these places are going to come back to the Latin rite under the true sacramental church that we know in orthodoxy. Wow, isn't that funny? I just say that, isn't that funny that, not funny, interesting that His Holiness, I mean, Pope Francis has, was trying to squash the Latin rite of the Mass. Well, also, it said, you know, there's again, we could get into so many just, little, uh, yeah, any branches of this in which you said it said also at Garabandal that the mass would in the future would be suppressed. So I always thought the word suppressed. Let's say that 
you and I are in a checkout counter or something, and then, you know, uh, or you, you put pressure on a person's arm or, or you know, or just you, you, it, like suppression. I always thought it was just like a little something. But I went to the dictionary to look at the, what the word suppressed actually meant. That is one of the definitions, but th there's also one that goes all the way to decimate. Wow. Yeah, wow. So this is how you see these little pieces right. of food just tying these things together. Now, mind you that this was contemporaneous with uh, the Second Vatican Council, so the mass would be suppressed. Now, at that time, the only mass in the, in, in the, in the Roman Catholic Church was the Latin mass. I see. So now we, she speaks about the description of a great event in the church is an exaggerated but poor translation of the original spoken by Conchita. It is incorrect to translate the phrase as, quote, a great event in the church. The actual phrase was, and then it gives the, 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 the Spanish full name, but it can be translated as a particular event slash occurrence in the church or a specific uh, or a specific event or uh, in, in the church, or a specific or a particular, I just misspoke there. One is a particular event or a specific event hmm. in the church. So that's interesting how that comes out with the original translation versus the way we say a great event. So it's something in particular that happens or specific. And we know the event will be the greatest miracle ever performed by Jesus for the world. It is supernatural and has never been seen and will not be explained by science. Wow. The it, greatest. And she, she likens it to like a pillar of smoke, which we know in the Old Testament in Hebrew is the Shekinah glory. But in English, it's the Shekinah glory in our phonics. So... Um, we, we look at it like that, but she says it's not that. It's never been seen before. It's going to be the greatest miracle that Jesus ever performed for the world. So think of it. And even the bishop that Conchita told what the miracle was, who he never released before he died, he told his staff after meeting with Conchita, he told his secretary that if these girls are not insane, this is going to be the greatest event since the resurrection. Wow. Wow. That's right. Wow. The material, when you see this body of material all at, all at once, it overwhelms you. We know that Padre Pio did see the miracle before he died. He told friends that he had seen the miracle. And we could get into that. Padre Pio believed in it. Mother Teresa very much believed in it. Mother Angelica, after being in leg metal leg braces for just 42 years, the one place in the entire world with all of her devotions, like she always talked about, to the infant of Prague and other in, in other places, Pere Lomanyal, the Sacred Heart, Lords, the one place she went to give thanks in the entire world was Garabandal. And Pope Paul VI believed in it. He said, this is the greatest story since the resurrection. Uh, we know John Paul II believed in it. And he wrote actually an inscription in a book for somebody who wrote through his um, secretary, Bishop Jeevish, now Cardinal Jeevish. And so we know Padre Pio did believe in the miracle. There's stories in there. I have several pages on his testimony and what he did. And uh, do you know the name when an, uh, an Italian man is buried, they put what I call a doily on their head, like you see woman wearing a church. What is that called in Italian? Do you know what that is? No, I'd have I, to look it up. I don't know either. I call it the doily. And it's like that lace. He asked, Padre Pio asked. That, you mean like a veil? Yeah, like I call it a doily. It's not like a full woman's veil, but it's something that they put over their head or their face in the Italian culture more from years back, or maybe they still do today. But uh, Padre Pio asked that that be given to Conchita before uh, before he was put to, laid to rest. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, yeah, I'm drawing did. a blank. Sorry, I don't know what the name is. Now I'll have to Google it. Yeah, I should do that. I should write a note. I should know that now because I've asked people before. 
<laughs> he, uh, it was also said the reigning Pope will see the great miracle from wherever he is, no matter who sure. the Pope is, he will see it. Because the only people who will see it are the people at the Nine Pines uh, in Garabandal itself, in this little small village in the Cantabrian Mountains. Well, won't that be, now that's a good question to ask because there's been controversy about that because not millions of people can't just go to a little small town. They're not equipped with everything. I heard that media would be covering it. Wouldn't the media be able to cover what the miracle was? Yeah, for sure. They'll be there. You know, we're in the 21st century and now we're in the year 2024. They're sure ability to do that. But the miracle specifically said, and that's another point, those that are there physically be will be healed. Yeah. Now, I've also been asked, will people who can't get there due to finances, circumstances, being on a stretcher at home or something, will they be healed? The answer is, I don't know. But it would seem in God's mercy, almost like baptism by desire, yeah. that if they really do want to be healed and believe in it, and they can't get there through all of these very valid circumstances, that um, would they be healed? I don't know. But the message says all there will be healed. Yeah, well, we know that the Pope in history just can't leave where he's doing for. So maybe that's the gift that God gives to the Pope. The, the, which is what I think. I think that's going to be heaven's gift to a reigning pope that he actually sees it mm -hmm. no matter where he is in the world. That's what it said. No matter, we'll see it wherever he is. And then uh, before the miracle, uh, something will happen that will cause people to stop believing in Garabandal. I have a section in the book called Legitimate Areas of Concern and Confusion. Uh, I present all the sides. I present data and just show what, what's happened. We know Joey Lomangino died, and a lot of people stopped believing. There was another time where Conchita said there would be three popes, and then El Fin de los Tiempos, and another time she said four, and then El Fin de los Tiempos, the end of times. Not the end of the world, like a lot of historical people want to brand somebody uh, that's that's close to this material. So, you know, as a lunatic or whatever, but th th there's just so much supporting material for this. But we know that something happens to ca cause people to fall away from this. And there's no doubt when Joey died, because Joey was supposed to see the miracle. And if Joey were alive today, he would be 94. So a lot of people don't live to 94. And But Conchita also said, People would fall away, but it wouldn't necessarily be from the amount of time that it took to happen. But one thing is kind of certain. When you look at all of the world events now, this is kind of like when you look at a kaleidoscope, you know, when you're turning it around, you know, everything's blurry and moving fast. And But you, when you really let it settle and focus in, things are more clear this is now more clear to see the events in the world are definitely moving to the fulfillment of these prophecies. I don't think we're there yet. And I think more people will fall away. I think there, you know, there's the prophecy that the, at the end of a synod, these events would happen. And I think everybody's, you know, the next, the last segment of the event, it was originally two years for the Synod on Synality, of which the working document is called Instrumentum Laboris. We know that the first one was at the local level, which we experienced, where you could go and, in essence, tell the priest what you thought about the church and where you, the direction of it. And they had these listening sections. Yeah. Last one, which ended last October in Rome, where 10 people sat at a table and they were just talking sessions. That was what's called the continental phase. And the one in 2024, at the end of October, is called the universal phase. And many people will be expecting a document at the uh -huh. end of that on its findings, which is what they're doing. So... Um, we know that there, with all of the division in the church, uh, we'll see some people fall away from what's said or not said, to put that lightly. Mm -hmm. We know 
that the division very much is increasing over the direction of the church and what's being said and done. And, and I, I just want to interject something here to our viewers. I did a, I did a podcast with John Henry Weston uh, about the synod to synodality back then in October for the, this last one. And he explains all that. So any viewers want to see that, you can go to Totus Tuus and click on his uh, a video to uh, support what Ted has just said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the other is that the miracle, now we're getting a little bit more specific. The miracle will occur on a Thursday evening at 8.30 p.m. Spanish time. That's kind of specific. The miracle will happen between the dates of the 8th and the 16th, inclusive in the months of March, April, May, or June. Now, um, I was just told just the other day, somebody said it was between the 7th and the 17th. I've never seen that anywhere else until I just heard it. Uh, people have pretty much used those dates for verbatim. And maybe that came from another visionary or apparition site or locutionist where they seem to indicate that they have more information or more precise shortening that time frame. Now on the dates of March, April, May, or June, due to Maria Sirocco, who is a friend of Mary Loli Masson of Garabandal, Spain, who married an American man named Lafleur, where she lived in Haverhill, Massachusetts, right exactly on the border of New Hampshire, one house away. Um, she specifically who knew the the the, the year of the um, the warning? She's uh, Maria Sirocco was very good friends with her, and Mary Loli either lived with her when she came from Spain because she was from Brockton, Massachusetts, then Pasadena, California, and she passed away. She was a great friend of Garabandal and would never want to do any error or hurt it in any way whatsoever, gave a lot of her life to supporting these messages and making them well known. She's the source of the story on it being in the month of April. And if it's between the 8th and the 16th, it could be on a time of... of um, uh, Good Friday, a Holy Thursday, um, when that falls in whatever year that could be uh, between April 8th through the 16th, you can actually start tracking down, uh, you know, during, you know, eight. they said at 8.30, is that it? 8.30 p.m. I've seen this. This has Holy been a mass time. Right. This has been a, a parlor game, 8.30 p.m. This has been a parlor game now of trying to predict the day in the year by looking at a significant Thursday uh, in the month of April or May or June. And I've been around this material now for over 40 years. And I can tell you categorically, conclusively, I haven't seen once yet anybody who has predicted a date on this who has been accurate. And what I have seen, frankly, is not a single person, but every single person go up in flames, in, a, in flames of glory. Everybody who has guessed this specifically from all the way 25 years ago, 30 years ago to the present day, not one has ever been right. Oh. And that's, that's significant. And, and now why nobody ever brings up March, but I have... Even in my bibliography, I have all of the VHS tapes, the DVDs. I have 44 books in a bibliography as resources that I have literally in a box about 12 feet away from me. And in a VHS tape that I saw many, many years ago from um, Conchita was a very young woman with young children in a studio in Ireland because it was an Irish commentator. And um, she was talking literally to him and you could hear the kids. They were talking about the kids outside the door. So she, the kids were obviously young. And she literally mentioned the, uh, the months of March, April, May or June on Irish TV. Uh -huh. so, so go back to this body of, of knowledge, March, April, May, June. I've also heard it said March, April, May or April, May of June. The two consistent messages months in there are right. April and may i can tell you from being in northern spain 
uh, in the Cantabrian Mountains, where the Pyrenees are just not that far away to where you go over into France, into Lord and Southern Spain. I can tell you if it's March, it's going to be cold. And, and, well, I haven't been there, or I don't know what April is, but I mean, um, if it's April, and if it's going to be related to Holy Thursday Mass or uh, 8.30 p.m., um, you know, it could, and if it's between the 8th and the 16th, some people think that if it, you look at the liturgical uh, year and day when the Holy Thursday is in April, April 13th of 2028, falls within those. I mean, a lot of people look at those types of things as the possibility of something like that. And uh, that's where people know. have been trying to piece that together. What what could be the event? Is there is there a significance to a certain Thursday? you know, in March, April, May, or June, between the 8th and the 16th. So people have had their calendars out for that for yeah. a, for decades now. And so I don't bother with that stuff. I mean, um, when it happens, it happens. But yet here, I just been living like somewhere between a hermit and a recluse to finish this. So yes, I believe in it. You know, and now according one other thing now according to Mary Lowley the miracle will take place within one year after the warning now this does not mean that it has to take place in the same calendar year but it may so now they go back to some of the anecdotal stories that have evolved over the years that may or may not be true we know that after Fatima happened, a lot more uh, came out as Sister Lucy got older. And then some of the message that she gave later, 1921 and 1929. Uh, so there's more that happened where the stories evolved. That's also happened at Medjugorje, where more data is given. So it's Maria Sirocco also that it happens in the same calendar year. Um and uh, so that's that's that. OK, so is it in the same calendar year? And then there's also the story that it may be also in an even numbered year. So now you're down. So is that true? I present the data. And if it's true, it's true. But I stick also what was originally said, because that's what the young visionary said then. And I asked Conchita many, many years ago in the mid 90s. Uh, I had spoken to her and I said, is the reason why you've never really spoken uh, and promoted the messages of Garabandal? And she gave me just a very, it was over the phone. It was a very, very wise answer, legitimate, um, and, and just a very mature way of answering it. She said, you know, I was a very young girl. She said, I've, I've always been afraid of doing damage to what I said then and what I remember. So when I, I would say this to all the listeners, as well as you and I, do we each remember what we said and did at 12 years old? 12, 13 or 14. I can tell you, I don't, you know, I have very vague memories on many, many things. So to try to be historically accurate to what was said and not contradict it, I think is very, very wise. Just go back to what was originally said. So is it an even numbered year, the same calendar year? You know, possible. I actually need to write that down. It's even. You forget about that sometimes. But um, it'll be on the feast of a young martyr of the Eucharist. Now, let's go back 2,000 years, especially in Roman pagan times of the brute emperors under people like the Diocletians, uh, the Caligulas and other people that were literally feeding people to the lions and beyond and, you know, living literally in the catacombs or else they'd be killed. And with communicating literally through the ictus fish of where of, of how to follow things, the little fish drawn in the dirt. So, you know, um, what's the definitive anthology of young Eucharistic martyrs in the church? It's, you know, we've heard St. Pancras, Hermenengeld, Blessed Amelda Lambertini, St. Stanislaus. It's the same names coming up. And, it, and is anyone right? Who knows? Who knows? Thousands of potential young martyrs. But it also says it, it's not, whether it's female or male, it never says. We're told that the miracle will last about 15 minutes. 
Other times I've seen it up to 15, 20 or a half hour. Hmm. It will be seen in the sky. And again, this will be seen in the sky. And I forgot to say about the warning. The warning will be seen and felt. We'll feel it in the interior of our soul, but it will also there'll be something celestial where it will be seen. I forgot to say that earlier. So we know it'll be possible to photograph and televise it, but not touch it. All those in the village and in the surrounding mountains will see it. You talk about could millions get to Garabandal? The answer is yes. Anybody who has ever been there and sees an aerial photograph or who hasn't been there, you can see Garabandal is a natural amphitheater. Millions could be on the side of those mountains and look down on the Nine Pines. It's an architectural masterpiece for what's supposed to happen there where it's a stadium type setting where, you know, you've got an incline where people could sit on the side of the mountain in anticipation of this event. Yeah. That it's just a, getting there by airline and getting tickets and things like that when it's announced. I mean, you have eight days after it's announced. So it just would be a mass amount of people. I mean, you're lucky if you're in the area and countries that are near there that can easily get there. But uh, someone from the States, you'd be you know, mass trying to get tickets to get over there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's you're going to have to be very, very creative. I mean, I've talked to people over the last three or four decades that have literally talked about pr uh, chartering a private jet. Uh, they have had uh, family members deathly ill. Um, in wheelchairs, aqua lungs, so ill, you know, they're, that have to be brought on a stretcher. So, you know, uh, logistically, it's going to be a big deal. Mm, and, yeah. and, and you're going to need to be creative how to get there. And you're going to have to somehow get to Spain. Mm. You know? But um, I even asked uh, in 1994, in my first visit, my wife and I, we went to see Conchita's brother. Now, this was quite a while ago. Conchita's brother's name was Seraphin, who was living in the house at, at the time of the apparitions. And um, uh, I asked him, I said, what would it be like at the time of the miracle? And he said something that I've never forgotten. He said, at the time of the miracle, it's going to be very difficult to get here. So what could that be? Could it be due to the crowds? Could it be to another variant? We saw what COVID did with lockdowns. Um, could it be uh, an economic, not a blip, but something very much major where, frankly, something's happened to the world economy? Is it a fuel issue? What, what could it be? So your mind can race in any direction of why you won't be able to get there and maybe a little bit of a combination of everything. But we saw with COVID, why so many people were unable to travel and freely. And there are a lot of people that didn't want to take the jab and they were precluded. So I don't I don't know what it's going to be. But he told me in his own home that in 1994 in October. Mm -hmm. so see how we, you remember that that stuck with you. And so like when you asked and Gina and she said, well, you know, she doesn't want to mislead people in case. And yeah. But if, if our Blessed Mother says something to someone, I would think that you would remember something like that. It would be set in your heart, uh, unless maybe she was told as well, like from her bishop or someone, that it's better to keep silent and that not cause commotions and things like that, because I'm, she's highly obedient and very uh, um, uh, you know, discreet, and uh, she's a beautiful lady, and... and uh, certainly an example to live after but um that's just a thought just came to me like you remembered what her brother said to you and that stuck with you so you know something like that yeah I mean, but these are these all little things that you know never say never never say always <laughs> you know you, you don't know is it potentially in an even numbered year the same calendar year the answer to that could be maybe yeah you know so now here's a major one. This is a major, major point that a lot of people follow this for this reason. The sick in the village who are present, the, the sick who are present will be cured. Wow. That's, almost, that's Abrahamic. 
that's like divine mercy where or you, your sins be as scarlet. They all become white as snow, which is right out of Isaiah 1. So, I mean, that's an Abrahamic promise in advance. Talk about specific where Isaiah talked about his name would be Emmanuel. And there's some very, very specific things in Isaiah, specifically 50 to 57, that you know, specifically talk about the coming of a Messiah. And so this is so specific. Uh, it's absolutely incredible of what to expect. And so can you imagine having a sick friend, relative, mother, father, daughter with a life-threatening disease with no cure and have this promise? Wow. You know, does it get any bigger than that? Will be cured. And for those that can't get there, I've been asked many times, will they will they be cured if they can't get there? My answer from a, a legal type standpoint would be, I don't know. But do I think in God's mercy they would be there if it's televised and they have the desire and everything? I think in God's mercy, maybe yes. But but uh, God has to do a lot with faith and belief. Yeah. You know. People According to your faith, so be it unto you. According to your faith, you know when we speak, we only we release only one of two forces in the world. When we release faith and say positive things, we're letting God act in a positive way. When we speak doubt, we're letting Satan act. That's why I, the older I've gotten, I'm much more cognizant of expressing faith or doubt. The, not on this kind of stuff. It, it, faith doesn't make you stupid. It makes you wiser. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's a concept of what God will or will not do based, you know, according to your faith, so be it unto you. And, and yeah, Jesus just like the Eucharistic uh, manifestation, when they ran out, it, it multiplied. It was it's in fed congregation. So it's uh, yeah, it's all I believe that. Yeah. Now, here's okay. uh, now here's the last uh, just near the last. Conchita, who knows the date of the great miracle, will, will announce it to the world eight days in advance. So we know that if if there's nothing in March, you know, you're planning, you've got your passport, you, you, you've got your bags packed in essence. So if it's not in March, then, you know, if it, it, it you're looking at April, if it doesn't happen in April, you'll you'll be booking a flight, maybe with a cancellation policy or something. And then getting to Spain would be the key thing. And then taking a train from somewhere to Santander, Burgos, or somewhere else up north, even uh, Navarre, and taking a taxi or whatever. But people will figure out how to get there. That's true, because then uh, warning happens. And then we, we were looking at April, May. Then you're, you know, she has it's eight days. Yeah. It's sequential. Right. You know, and, and heaven wouldn't have said eight days if it's not possible. It right. didn't say three weeks. It said eight days. So <laughs> heaven is a little bit wiser than us. So in other words, be on guard. And then here, Russia will be converted after the miracle and all will love our hearts. Wow. So this nation that has done what it's done all of these years with the suppression of Christianity, which they say has opened up. I mean, I spent two years in the Soviet Union in 92 and 93, and there was more freedom of worship, but it still has limits under the, under a communist regime. Wow. Um, and Conchita said about this great supernatural event, before the miracle, there will be many reported apparitions throughout the world. She said this in December of 1962. And she said, a bishop of Santander will come along who will not believe at first, but will receive a sign and allow priests to go to Garabandal. Um, and we know that, you know, I think I, I I have in the book, I forget if it's six or seven bishops since 1961, when it first happened. Some have been incredibly supportive. One in particular was not supportive all the way to writing a letter to all of the bishops in Spain saying he wasn't supportive of it. But on the other hand, never condemned it. And one of the reasons I think it was never condemned, I think that there was such a degree of support in the Vatican itself from Paul VI and then John Paul II. I think that, and, and you know, these Paridi over there, these people that hang around Rome, 
and you know at the angelicum and knack and other places they talk and so i i think to a certain degree garabandal has been protected from being condemned mm -hmm. that's what I, that's what i think and because it had a major major support from very very substantial people so that's really the major points and we know after the miracle there's going to be a permanent sign now is the permanent sign the actual um miracle itself i don't know does the data doesn't say it could be it may be but it'll be there till the end of time mm. and it won't be able to be explained by science what what it, what was it like with the burning bush of moses that was never consumed that had never been seen we had never seen the red sea part or any part any part of it ever you know no ocean has ever or, or C has ever divided in two to where two million people could walk through a passage to safety. And then what should have been an 11 day journey took 40 years. So, um, you know, that's a bit of a delay. And, and, the, Jew, and, and the, the, the Hebrews leaving Egypt had a shorter route to where they were going. But frankly, God wanted to show his manifestation of glory through that miracle. Wow. Mm -hmm. you look at the map, there was a shorter route. But God wanted to show his manifestation to the Jewish people. Wow. So that's more or less, there's so many other things. The, the messengers are about amendment of life, the sanctity of marriage, the sanctity of the priesthood, and the Eucharist. So I don't see those as a radical Catholic message. It couldn't be more clear. And it's the reason I think so many people have stood behind it over years. There's a group of people that still really, really believe in this. And there's a percentage of people that won't pay any attention until the, the events themselves. That's kind of normal in this atmosphere. There's a lot of people believe in not just a group. I mean, there's probably millions of people who believe in. And yeah, and some have fallen away. We saw, you know, we, we could maybe we hit on the synod just briefly, but there was just a prophecy that when the Pope returns from Moscow, you remember this just a, a couple of months ago, what, three or four months, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, you know, the, the Pope Francis has had a history with Patriarch Kirill all the way back to 2015 or 16 when they met in the Havana airport. Havana Cuba airport and they have spoken several times Francis has right after the beginning of the war in Ukraine Francis uh, went over to the Russian embassy hopefully to broker peace nothing ever evolved we know um, um, leaders from um, Kiev have um, in Ukraine have come to, to the Vatican seeking uh, the support Zelensky in particular came last May 13th on a day of Fatima, which, you know, was very well known. He was trying to equate Fatima in the Ukraine with the heaven with Blessed Mother intervening. So we have these things uh, with a pope going to Moscow that came and went. Now, I never thought it would happen. I wrote it in the book and it was actually when I was finishing the book, this was going. The, the information never came from Rome. All of the information on the Pope going to Moscow came from the Soviet Union and specifically from TASS, their, oh. their news, news bureau. And the Pope was obviously using uh, his plane refueling on the way to Mongolia as a pretense to get a meeting with Kirill. But, you know, um, he didn't really need to ref, ref, refuel because the plane uh, went directly from Rome to Mongolia without refueling and came back. But he was, you know, hopefully saying, look at, I need to refuel, you know, can we, can we meet? But it never happened. So, you know, but the, the, the prophecy after is that right after the Pope returns from Moscow, um, um, Russia would suddenly and unexpectedly, those two words, overrun um, Europe. So that's pretty significant. But there's but now to make it a little bit more bizarre on that prophecy, that bizarre is only from one person. His name is Albrecht Weber. He wrote a book called Garabandal, the Finger of God. 
He's German. It was written in German. It was translated. The first edition was in 1992. And the second edition was in the year 2000. However, that was never mentioned in his book. Can you imagine? Oh. And he, he lived in Garabandal. He died in Garabandal. And he's buried in Garabandal. And he's a great friend. He's like Maria Sirocco. So he's the source of that story on a sole basis of the prophecy to Moscow. And he alleges, and Barry Hanratty, who wrote Garabandal Journal and Garabandal Magazine, for 50 years being around Garabandal, said that that was true because he had met with Albrecht Weber. But why would Albrecht Weber never mention it in his book? I have a friend who went through the book seven times and he said he never found the word Moscow in his book. Wow. So his speculation as an authority on Garabandal is that in student, um, you know, I don't think anybody's an expert. I think they're students of it. And uh, I consider myself just uh, an aficionado of, 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 of something that I really enjoy studying. But uh, it, there's speculation that Albrecht Weber was possibly asked not to put that in his book by one of the visionaries. And it was said the day after the last apparition, uh, and it was said in Conchita's kitchen. And, and But yet I have another friend who's a priest who, who says he knew somebody that was there, that that story came down from the family that was there. So this gets back into, you know, it's not as there's gaps in a lot of this material. This is kind of like trying to study creation science, which I believe in creationism. But there's gaps. The book of Genesis even has gaps. There's more gaps in the 15 chapters, first 15 chapters of Genesis than the rest of the Bible combined with mystery. Mm. So there's yeah. gap. There's gaps. Well, I... I, um, there's, it's endless. I mean, there's just so much more that we could talk about. Uh, you did an excellent job on, on, uh, enlightening us further on the miracle. Um, certainly there's more things I'd like to know. I, uh, you know, and I don't think we have enough time right now, but, you know, but why the warnings necessary and the, how these enemies of heaven's fights, um, there's uh, just so much. I would strongly suggest to you, my friends, um, who are always view Totus Tours, pick up this great book that Ted Flynn wrote, hot off the press today. Go to sign.org and get it. It uh, it's it's one of those books that you you would never want to uh, want you would want for your possession. One of your favorite books. I want to thank you, dear friend, for being uh, with us today. Um, uh, certainly uh, things that you say and uh, have helped me grow uh, in my own uh, relationship uh, with God. Uh, you're a priceless friend for me, and I'm sure to so many other people at Totus to us. And I, I hope that you would agree to come on so again uh, very soon here so that we can continue uh, this discussion more on uh, Garen Bindal. I would love to do it. We scratched the surface, so to speak. <laughs> no, that old euphemism, that old euphemism. It. We scratched the surface. <laughs> Think of it. The Blessed Mother appeared 2,000 times to four girls over four years and four months. We scratched the surface, but we, we hit... As I say, we got the fat in the fire, I think. Yeah, last word to you. Uh, if you like, before we sign off, or was that your last word? <laughs> That's my last word. This, this material, I can tell you, it sent me into spiritual ecstasy. Why? Because it's the hope. I asked a priest not long ago, just a week or two ago, and I asked them this kind of frequently to take a reading and a pulse. I said, what are you hearing in confession? And, you know, he knows he knows the spirit of the question. And he said, I'm hearing tremendous stress in families. He said, that, that's what I'm hearing. He said, there's tremendous stress in families. And he said, husbands and wives are at each other's throats. And he said, a lot of it's being hidden. Mm -hmm. And so when you see that kind of stress, that's why you see the hope of what this will do for humanity to put us back on track 
and 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 to what God originally tends in our life to where God can work through us in a mere pure in another pure fashion versus this culture that's deteriorating faster than anybody can imagine right now. I'm really looking forward to reading it. Uh, and uh, I will give you my comments on it for sure. So thank you very much, Ted. God bless you and Maureen and your family and uh, many blessings to continue to do great works for our lady and our Lord. And thank you everyone at Totus to us, all our viewers for uh, viewing us and supporting us uh, by uh, visiting us and listening to our podcast. Um, this is how we are family. And it's all about community and family and faith. And uh, thanks to you. We have a, one of my heroes, Ted Flynn, for being here with us. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I hope people enjoyed it. All right. God okay. bless. We'll see you have soon. A good, have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. God bless you all.